All right, guys, so this is a video to go over the homework from 3.7 day two. I already have it all ready to go for you guys. So here we go, number 13. We need to implicitly differentiate x squared y minus x squared y squared equals four because we need to find where the slope is defined. So anytime we're asked to find the slope, we know that that means that we need to find the derivative. So because we have x's and y's, we have to differentiate implicitly. So looking at the first term, I have x squared times y. So since I have two quantities here, I'm going to have to use product rule. So that means I need the first term, x squared, times the derivative of the second. Derivative of y is 1. And because it was a y, dy, dx. Sorry, my table is too close to the camera thing. It keeps bouncing it. All right, plus the second term, which is a y, times the derivative of the first term was x squared, so 2x. Okay, and now we can focus on the next term, which is also two quantities being multiplied together, so product rule again. So we need the first term, which is a negative x squared, times the derivative of the second, so the derivative of y squared is 2y, but because it's a y, dy dx. Okay, plus the second term, which is y squared, times the derivative of the first term. The, the first term is negative x squared, and its derivative would be a negative 2x. Okay, equals the derivative of 4 is 0. Okay, so let's clean this up a little bit. And remember, we need to keep the dy dx's on the left, and we need to move all the other terms to the right. So this term is going to need to move to the right. This has dy dx. This term does not, so it's going to need to move to the right. Okay. When I multiply this out, y times 2x will be a 2xy that I'll need to subtract to the other side. And when I multiply this out, y squared times negative 2x, that'll be a negative 2xy squared that I'll need to add to move it to the other side. Okay. So now... In the same step, I'm going to factor out that dy dx. So the first term that has it is x squared times 1, which is just an x squared. This term has the dy dx, and that's a negative x squared times 2y, so that would be a minus 2x squared y. And then the other stuff is moving to the other side. Well, this is positive, so it needs to be subtracted. This is negative, so it needs to be added. And there we go. Okay. Now we need to isolate the dy dx. So we're going to need to take this and move it to the other side by dividing it because it's being multiplied times the dy dx. And we have to undo the division or the multiplication by dividing. So divide by x squared minus 2x squared y. And now we have the slope formula. But we have to say, find where the slope is defined at. So this is a fraction. And we know that if the denominator is 0, that makes it undefined. So we need to focus on what makes it undefined so that we can figure out, well, what's defined? Everything else that's not undefined, right? Say that five times fast. So we need to focus on the denominator. So we know that the denominator is going to be undefined when x squared minus 2x squared y equals 0, because we'll get a 0 in the denominator. All right, I'm noticing a common factor of x squared, so factor that out, and you'll get a 1 minus 2y. Break those apart, set them each equal to 0 and solve, we'll get x equals 0. So it's undefined at x equals 0. And when we solve for y, so add 2y to the other side, so 1 equals 2y, and divide both sides by 2, we'll get that y equals 1 half. So when x equals 0 and y equals 1 half, that's when this is undefined. So it's defined everywhere else except for this x and y value. So how do we write our answer? Just like this. I'm going to say 
the slope is defined, every point except where x equals 0 and y equals 1 half. So it's defined everywhere else except at x equals 0 and y equals 1 half. Okay. Number 17. We need to implicitly differentiate at this point, and we need to find t and n. So the, the equation of the tangent line and the equation of the normal line is my quick way to write that up. So let's differentiate. So the derivative of x squared using power rule would be 2x. And then plus, I have xy. Well, that's x times y. I'm going to have to use product rule on it. So that's the first term times the derivative of the second. It was a y, so dy dx. Plus the second times the derivative of the first. Derivative of x is 1. Minus the derivative of y squared would be a 2y, but because it's a y, dy dx, and the derivative of 1 is 0. Okay, so we're now going to need to get the dy dx's by themselves on the left here, which means we're going to need to move the 2x to the other side, so we'll have to subtract it. So we'll have a negative 2x, and we're going to need to also subtract the y, so minus y. And then on the left, we can factor out the dy dx, and when we factor it out, we'll have an x and a negative 2y. Wow, I spaced that out way too far apart, but that's okay. <laughs> okay, let me rewrite this because that's bothering me. I didn't plan that out very good now, did I? Okay. All right, so now I've got to isolate the dy dx, and that means that we're going to need to move it to the other side. It's being multiplied, so we have to undo the multiplication by dividing. So we're going to need to divide the x minus 2y on the other side. And now we have the slope formula. And we have a point to plug in. Okay, so plug it in, plug it in. Oh, shoot, I dropped my pen. And we will get negative 2 times the x value is 2 minus the y value is 3, all over x, which is 2, minus 2 times the y value is 3. Okay, so negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. Negative 4 minus 3 is a negative 7. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 minus 6 is a negative 4. Oh, double negative equals a positive, so our slope is 7 fourths. Now we have enough to write the equation of our tangent line and normal line. So the tangent line will be t of x equals, the slope is 7 fourths, times x, the x value is a 2, so minus 2, and the y value is a 3, so plus 3. And there is our slope of the tangent line or the equation of the tangent line is what I meant. The slope is 7 fourths. Now for the normal line, we just have to find the opposite reciprocal of 7 fourths, but that's easy. Opposite of positive is negative, and then you flip it, so we get negative 4 sevenths x minus 2 plus 3. And there is our equation for the normal line. Number 21 is next. Okay, so we have to implicitly differentiate again at the point negative 1, 0 so that we can find the slope, so that we can find the equation of the tangent line and the normal line. We're finding t and n again. We'll also be finding t and n on number 25 as well. Okay, so let's differentiate. So the derivative of 6x squared would be a 12x. Plus, this is two variables multiplied together, so we have to use product rule. So the derivative, or the first, times the derivative of the second, it's a y, so dy dx, 
plus the second times the derivative of 3x would just be a 3, plus the derivative of 2y squared would be 4y, but it's a y, so dy dx, plus the derivative of 17y would be 17, but it had a y, so dy dx, um, the derivative of negative 6 is 0, so that's gone, and the derivative of 0 is 0. Okay, dokay. All right, so now we need to clean this up a bit, and we need to keep the dy dx's on the left and factor out that dy dx, but we also need to move the other stuff to the right. So this 12x, we're going to need to subtract and put it on the other side. I'm going to try to judge it right this time. And that has a dy dx. This does not, though. That we're going to have to move. y times 3 is a 3y, and it's positive, so we'll have to subtract it to move it to the other side. And the rest have a dy dx. So that's one, two, three terms. I think I can squeeze that in there. And we'll have dy dx. So we have a 3x. We have a positive 4y and a positive 17. Oh, perfect. I judged it right this time. Okay, so now we need to separate the dy dx from that quantity 3x plus 4y plus 17. It is being multiplied times dy dx, so we're going to have to divide it to get it to the other side. Okay, so this is my slope formula, and I have a point to plug in. So negative 12 times the x value is a negative 1. Minus 3 times the y value is 0. All over 3 times negative 1 plus 4 times 0 minus 17. Wipe out, wipe out. Negative 12 times negative 1 is a positive 12. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3. Negative 3 minus 17 is a... Wait, was that a minus 17? It was a plus 17. Why did I write minus? I was like, wait a minute. That's not what I'm so showing in my notes. All right. So negative 3 plus 17 is 14. Okay. And when we reduce that, let's see. I think we can reduce by 2. 12 divided by 2 is 6. 14 divided by 2 is 7. So there is our slope. And now we can write the equations of the tangent line and the normal line. So we'll get t of x equals 6 sevenths times the x value is a negative 1, so that'll be x plus 1, and the y value is 0, so plus 0. And the normal line, n of x, equals the opposite reciprocal of 6 sevenths is negative 7 six times x plus 1 plus 0. And there we go. Number 25, y equals 2 sine of pi x minus y at the point 1, 0. We need to find t and n again, so we need to implicitly differentiate. Okay? All right, well, let's start. The derivative of y is 1, but because it was a y, we have to put dy dx equals. Now, we're going to have to use the chain rule on the inside there. And we have that coefficient of 2 out front, so I'm just going to leave it out front. The overall is the sign. Okay, so we'll use chain rule on the inside. So the derivative of the inside would be pi minus the derivative of y is dy dx. But remember, this is going to be multiplied by overall. The overall is the derivative of sine is cosine of the inside, pi x minus y. Okay, so we have dy dx equals 2 times, so now what I want to do is plug in that point. I'm like, where did it go? Let's go ahead and plug in that point. So we'll have pi minus dy dx times the cosine of pi times the x value is a 1 
minus the y value is a zero. Okay. So pi minus zero is just pi. So let's rewrite this. dy dx equals two times the quantity pi minus dy dx cosine of pi. But the cosine of pi, well, that is at what x value? Pi is 180 degrees, and at that coordinate, that's the point negative 1, 0. So cosine of pi is negative 1. So we have dy dx equals 2 times the quantity pi minus dy dx times cosine of pi is now negative 1. So it just gets smaller and smaller as we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and distribute the two and then multiply in by a negative one. So pretty much two times negative one is a negative two. We just took care of the negative over here and then distribute. So dy dx equals negative two pi plus two dy dx. Okay. Now, I have dy dx over here. I have two of them. And over there, I have one of them. So I can subtract this dy dx from both sides. Oops, that's a y. But then I'll have nothing on the left, which means I should move this to pi to be on the left. Okay. So I will have 2 pi equals 2 dy dx minus 1 dy dx is 1 dy dx. So the derivative equals 2 pi. So that means the slope is 2 pi. All right, yeah, the slope can have a pi in it. It's totally fine. Don't second guess that. So now we can write t of x equals the slope, which is 2 pi times x. The x value is a 1, so minus 1. The y value is zero, so plus zero. And then n of x, the normal line, the opposite reciprocal of two pi is negative one over two pi. x minus one plus zero. There we go. That's 25. Last one, number 29. We get to find a second derivative, and this problem is pretty cool. I'm gonna take up this whole page here. What? Yes, I totally am. So, we need to take a first derivative before we can get to the second derivative, obviously. So let's take the derivative. Derivative of y squared would be two y, but because it's a y, dy dx. Equals, the derivative of x squared would be two x, and the derivative of two x would be a two. Okay, isolate the dy dx, so that means we're gonna need to get rid of the two y in front of it. It's being multiplied together, so when we move it to the other side, we're dividing by it, okay? So, we get two x plus two all over two y. Well, remember all or nothing, all three terms have a two. So we could reduce it out, and it becomes a one. So the dy dx equals an x plus one over y. Okay, so this is the first derivative. Now let's find the second derivative. Okay, because I have a quantity divided by a quantity, a fraction, I'm going to have to use the quotient rule. Okay, so when we take the second derivative, the notation for that is d squared y over dx squared. Second derivative with respect to y. Okay, and that would be, okay, well it's a fraction, so low d high minus high d low over low squared. So low is y times the derivative of the high, derivative of x plus one is just a one, minus the high Derivative of the low would be a one, but it's a y, so dy dx all over the low squared, so y squared. Okay, 
clean this up some more. So we're gonna have d squared y over dx squared equals, well, we have y minus x plus one times one is just x plus one. And dy dx, we know what that equals. It equals x plus one over y. That's the first derivative. So plug it in, x plus one over y, all over y squared. Okay, so let me use a different color for this next part. This is over one, because those are fraction times a fraction. You multiply straight across the numerator and the denominator. This is a y over one, but I need to subtract. So that means I need to get a common denominator which means I need to multiply top and bottom by a y to make that happen, okay? So when I rewrite this, here's the fraction bar and here's the numerator is a fraction also. So there's a fraction in the numerator. The denominator is gonna be a y. y times y is a y squared minus, I'm gonna multiply out x plus one times x plus one, that's x squared plus two x plus one when you FOIL it out and combine like terms, all over y squared, okay? All right. Oh, I wanna use a different color. Dividing fractions as easy as pi, you flip the second and multiply. So I'm gonna have y squared, I'm gonna distribute that negative. So negative x squared minus two x minus one over y times one over y squared and before I go any further I have something else that I can substitute because I'm like well that y squared looks familiar and it should y squared equals this up here so we're gonna substitute that in so that will be x squared plus 2x minus x squared minus 2x minus 1. And when we multiply by 1, it doesn't change anything. All over y times y squared is y cubed. Okay? And that's kind of a necessary step because look at what happens. These cancel. These cancel. All I have left is negative 1 over y to the third. Look how small that is and all this work that we did. It's an accomplishment. I, I like problems like these. They're very, they're challenging, yes, but it's all a logical process and I love that. All right, bye.